OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Hi, my name is Jennifer Gallardi. I am a ESL and citizenship te prep teacher at Milpitas Adult School, uh, which is very close to San Jose. Uh, I also um, am I just got the position of being a, a moderator for the uh, civics education and citizenship group for links.ed.gov. Uh, if anybody has any special requests, please put it in the chat. Or if you have any questions during my presentation, please feel in, uh, free to interrupt. Okay, so um, I wanted to start off this presentation with the Jack London tree from Oakland. So that was a tree that would greet you as you would come out of the BART station in Oakland and on your way to CCAE. So uh, we are going to identify the latest re resources related to civics in engagement, US history, government and citizenship, in adult education and immigrant integration programs. By adapting a court, uh, incorporating these digital resources, participants will be able to implement learning strategies appropriate for EL civics, citizenship prep, GED high set online classes, blended learning, distance learning environments, or directed self study. I would like to talk about a little bit about my ESL class. Of course, we follow. Uh, CASAS, and we uh, incorporate civics by having uh, co-ops, uh, doing co-ops in our ESL classes. Also, I teach a, a citizenship class that was originally in the classroom, but has now been transitioned to distance learning because of COVID-19 and because we have a teacher shortage in Northern California. And we hope to return to the classroom soon. So uh, the first thing I would like to talk uh, talk for, I wanted to talk about the way forward in citizenship and most of today will be focusing on citizenship. So if you have something uh, specifically about civics, please put, put that in the chat. Uh, I'm going to talk about the, the uh, test redesign for the USCIS uh, 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 citizenship interview process. So we have the website here for the naturalization test redesign development website. So and all these these slides will be available later for you to to use and to download and to use yourself. They're going they're basically uh, uh, putting out or testing two possible redesigns. The first one is a multiple choice test civics test, they're going to take it from a battery of 125 civics questions, and they're very similar to the, the citizenship questions on the 2008 uh, te civics test. They're going to be delivered on a computer. So when, as opposed to when a student or applicant goes to their citizenship interview now, the USCIS officer ask the questions and the student or applicant response to those questions. During this, during this pilot, they're gonna be delivering the civics questions by computer. There's gonna be 10 questions. It's gonna be pulled from that battery of 125 civic questions. There's gonna be four answer choices and they're not gonna do anything like answer A and B are correct, or all of the above or none of the above, okay? So there is a specific correct answer. The second thing that they're gonna be talking about, I'm gonna spend more of my time talking about this, is a standardized picture-based speaking test uh, that are gonna show things from daily routines, weather, food, and shopping. And it's similar to the best plus 2.0 or the TOEIC bridge test. And the prompt is basically tell me about this picture and it's uh, scored on how well they incorporate vocabulary and phrases. So here was the original, uh, the original, um, excuse me. 
here's the here is the original uh, 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 picture that they were showing. They were showing a a, a woman and a, a a girl cooking. A lot of people assume that instead of a mother-daughter relationship, this was a uh, grandmother and granddaughter relationship. And people were having concerns because it's like, hey, there's nothing about grandparents or grandchildren in the citizenship test. But again, people would be asked to describe it. Now, from the next, the, um, so that was an old test, uh, old picture that USCIS was showing. This is one of the new, the new, uh, ones that they're showing, and again, there's describing the describe the picture above. Who's in the picture? Where are they? What are they doing? And think about your answer for 20 seconds. So here is more identifiable. You probably have a father and a son. You have more specific directions or more more direction about how a person should respond to this. So when they're delivering this part of the test. Again, this will be done by computer during the pilot. The person will be seeing the be, be seeing this this uh, picture. They will be seeing the directions. However, they're going to record the voice response to the to the the test. So, if you're delivering this test or doing the pilot of this test, you're going to need to have a computer like a Chromebook or even an iPad, you're gonna to need to be able to record the voice and they also wanna have a camera while they're on the person while they're doing the test. So participating institutions will be provided with a full bank of multiple choice civics tests, questions, correct answers and educational resources. So, uh, our school has, I signed up for the, the, the test. We've identified two groups. We're gonna try to have approximately 50 students take the speaking test and perhaps 10 students uh, take the civics test. We have not received those uh, these um, uh, educational resources yet. Those educational resources, we've been invited to participate in another webinar or orientation center uh, session uh, next Friday. So we're expecting to receive those uh, those uh, educational resources very soon after that. Jennifer, we have a question in the chat. Please. Hi, Kim Walker from Miss Berry Adult School. Hi. So in uh, forward thinking with the speaking portion of this exam, yeah, uh, we usually do this in a test center with 20, 22 students at a time. Right. Um, do you have any recommendations on how to do the speaking portion with a large group? So do you have, okay, with the, I don't see what the, the problem is going to be, okay? But with the speaking, do, oh, I, so let me just talk about your physical computers for a second. Okay. Do you have cameras on those computers? We do not. Okay, so that might be a little bit, that might be one of the problems, okay? Do you have headset sets? Yes. Okay, so I think you're gonna be able to, to deliver on the civics. I don't know if you're gonna be able to do uh, deliver on the speaking, but they're gonna come up. Uh, I think you can go and negotiate with USCIS on this. Have you actually uh, signed up to participate in this pilot? We have not, but in considering the possibility of doing that or what the test will look like in the future, you know, mm -hmm. we want to be forward thinking if we need to order cameras, webcams, or things like that. Yeah. We need to do that sooner versus later because our fiscal spending window opens quickly. Okay. The other thing is, is that I, uh, the question is, is that, that when you, and I have the email at the very bottom, when you basically say, hey, we want to participate in the test, you can say, we don't have these webcams. Is it okay to do the large group together? Because I was assuming that we were going to do something one-on-one -on -one because we have a really small school. But I know that your school is much larger. So these are the questions that USCIS needs to, to address before you would participate. And I think that's a really, really important question. Thank you. So, but I, I am going to be going to a natural, um, I can bring up this question in um, when I, um, 
participate in the webinar next Friday, and I would be really happy to, to pass on those comments to you. That would be great. Thank okay, you. so, okay. Um, so we'll have to exchange emails a little bit later. Okay, so um, after all the pilot information has been gathered, so they're starting the pilot now, they're gonna be running it through the summer and they're gonna to try to finish it in mid-September. They're gonna gather the information or the data that has been the captured and they're gonna have a tag team that's gonna, where they're gonna review the results and they're gonna basically say what questions are appropriate, what questions are not appropriate. Because if we have questions that are consistently get false readings and things like that, of course we do not want those questions, okay? So, and again, nonprofits and adult education programs can volunteer at NATZ redesign 22 at uscis.dhs.gov. The big question is, why do they call it the Naturalization Test Redesign 2022? It's because the announcement was released December 2022. Gee, they could have waited a month and done 2023, right? But anyway, let's move on to some people who've commented on this or have had seen previews of this, this test. Uh, we have uh, a comment from Bill Bliss, who has concerns about if we do something that's picture based, it's basically detaching the whole thing about the naturalization test from the N-400. So that's one of his main concerns. Um, Lynn Weintraub Traub had some questions about the civics test. And my, my response to that is, I really want a civics test that looks like us and who we are as Americans and our value as Americans. So for example, one of the things that I noticed when I first encountered the naturalization test is, wow, there's a lot of references to war in there. And I understand the, the uh, how we respond to war as a society is very, very important, but maybe I would like to see something more about labor, the labor movement or maybe something more about the feminist movement, et cetera, et cetera. So we really need to consider what kind of questions we wanna have and how our students can see themselves within the, the test itself. And um, I, am post, I'm, I am hosting a discussion about the citizenship test redesign uh, on links. So that is um, um, uh, sponsored by the Department of Education. And again, it's at the Civics and Citizenship Forum. So, and then there's thoughts about the USCIS uh, naturalization interview. So please participate on that. And I'll come back to that a little bit later. So now we're gonna continue on about some new um, resources from USCIS and USCIS adjacent uh, organizations. Does anybody have any further questions before we continue? Um, so you may be wondering why I'm showing these pictures of nature. It's because um, uh, I do have a blog, uscitizenpod.com. And I also like to show, I, I post something every day. So I've had over 5,000 posts about citizenship related materials. One of my favorite sources is the Department of Interior. Every week they put up a um, uh, like a, a video about what's happened in the Department of Video. And they really touch a lot of communities in the United States that are not necessarily covered in the, the, the citizenship interview. So just bringing that to consciousness that we're all part of America is really important. So this was one of their pictures of the of the week. Excuse me, we have a, a hand up out there. Sure, please go ahead. Um, yes, hi. Um, I I attended their their first uh, meeting that they did about the redesign. Right. And I I sent them an email saying I was interested, and mm -hmm. I never heard anything. Does that ha if if they are already interested in you piloting, ha would we have heard? No, I don't think so. When did you send it? Was it like in January or was it April? Uh, no, it would have been probably January. Ooh, January. It wow. was a while ago. And I yeah. just, yeah. I, so, you know, one of the big groups that uh, 
applied really early was LAUSD. Mm. They haven't heard back yet either. Okay. <laughs> so, so, hey, it's nothing personal, but it's okay to basically send them another email and say, hey, we want in. Okay? okay. So that that's that's perfectly okay to to follow up on that. And that would be another really good question for me to to follow up on. Hey, we haven't heard back yet. And and regarding the meeting next Friday, do you how do we access that if we want to listen? I think it's I think it's part I think it's only for the people who they've already chosen. So oh. they've done a series of um rollouts with community-based organizations. So that happened much earlier in the year, okay? Oh. So now they're slowly bringing things on. When they did the previous redesign uh, pilot, there was, first of all, of course there, there was COVID and everything like that. But the thing is, is that they basically um, did not do things in a very controlled roll rollout situation. So they're being much tighter about that right now. Oh, okay. All okay. Right. So Thanks. I don't think I don't think the answer is no. I think the answer is we're still getting through our we're still going through our email. Okay. Yeah. I think that's I think that's it. So Okay, thanks. Okay. So um all right. So one thing that I really wanted to talk about especially because of our adult education programs, I don't know about you, our school has not still recovered yet from the drop in student enrollment from uh, COVID-19. So one of the things that actually really blew my mind was um, these USCIS eligible to naturalize fact sheets. And so this information, it's, it's two pages, really nice PDFs that show the number of legal permanent residents who are eligible to naturalize by the country of origin. So these are people that should be in our citizenship classes. The number of years that uh, as LPR status, so a lot of them are past five years, okay? So they should be in their classes, but they're not there yet, okay? Their category of admission, so did they come in uh, through H-1B visas? Did they come up through re family reunification, et cetera? They talk about if they're male or female, they talk about their age and their zip code. And they usually pull out the top three zip codes of these metropolitan areas. So for instance, if we take a look at the one in San Jose or Santa Clara Valley, the top three zip codes where we have a lot of LPRs ready to get their citizenship, one of those is Milpitas, my zip code 95035. First question, do we have an adult school there? Yes, okay, we do have an adult school. Second question is, what is the age of the, these people? Are they in their 30s or their 40s? If they're in their 30s or 40s, they might be too busy to come to school because they have to, they ha they're working. However, as we look deeper into the information, we found that much, a lot of those, uh, those people were actually over 60 years old and they were in, um, they were Southeast Asian, Southeast Asian Indian, and they were also, uh, they were older, so they were seniors. So all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, we got a lot of seniors here that need to get citizenship. Why can't they access their, why aren't they in our classes? Is it because of L1? Is it because of, um, is it because there, there's problems with transportation? Because our adult school has problems, there's transportation problems. Is it that they don't know about us? Do we need to start advertising differently? So that was really, really interesting to take a look at this. Also, not only is this interesting to use to plan our adult education programs, but it's really interesting if you wanna get the notice of a politician. So for example, I was doing some advocacy for TESOL and I was meeting with a congressional representative. They were kind of sleeping through my presentation until I got to this and I said, these people are not citizens yet. These people could tip the vote one way or the other. Suddenly this person was very interested in what I said. So if you could take a look at these, these, uh, these uh, fact sheets for California and take a look, especially in these areas, do we have our, 
are our adult schools there? Do we have publicity there? Do we have the teacher? Do we need L1 teachers to teach citizenship in a person's uh, native language? Do we need to create a bridge? This is very, very important and it will really be helpful to bring more data to, the, to any conversation that you have. And when you have more data, you usually get more funding. Okay, I want to talk about two new, uh, two more new things from USCIS. Um, we there, they have a civics guides to the monuments of more memorials on the National Mall. So, for instance, sometimes you have your citizenship students in class with you for a long, long time. You've gone through all this material. This is a way to re-see a lot of or review a lot of the material, especially at the end of the semester. So there's 13 PDFs uh, based on each one of these, um, these monuments. Great way to review. And also a lot of our students have actually been on tours in Washington, DC. And uh, so they really, really appreciate this. Also, they have this new uh, uh, civics or this new toolkit about families studying or preparing for the citizenship together. So maybe mom and dad are in civic, uh, the citizenship class. Well, how do they basically share this information with their children? So they have all sorts of games based on the civics content that's in the USCIS 100 questions, how they can share that with through fun games with their kids. So take a look at these two guides. The next one I wanted to talk about, um, I hope everybody knows about this. This is an oldie but a goodie, is that we have preparing the oath and it's one question, one video from the National Museum. Uh, of American history and the USCIS. So I hope uh, many people are you are using this. Um, I like to use the um, the PDF of the um, what is that called? Not the transcriptions. I think that yeah, the transcripts. And I use them as basis for PDFs for closed listening activities, etc. So again, take a look at this one from um, preparing the oath. We have three new video series from USCIS. So if you're on YouTube, you're not gonna, and you go to the USCIS channel, you're not gonna see everything under, because they usually have the uploads and you, you see that, but they basically put these in other parts of their YouTube channel. Say for instance, looking at the playlist. So one of the playlists is, USCIS multi-language naturalization process presentations. So most people or most teachers who've gone through USCIS training have seen this a million, this information a million times. However, now they have native speakers and the the cap, closed captions in the native language, so the the students can basically get a really good overview of what's expected during the naturalization process. They also have it in uh, American Sign Language as well. They have a couple new uh, videos for Afghan nationals, especially about how to uh, create their online account, how to to uh, keep track of their TP or their any of their um, applications for asylum, et cetera. So again, taking a look at these and Dari and English and POS2 is going to be very uh, important. Ah, see a misspelling. Okay, and then I have the there's the how to playlist and the how to playlist is approximately 20, um, 20 videos. However, there's a really good, simple, super clear videos that you want to pull out from this one. And they're recent, they're talking about preparing for the naturalization interview because there's still a lot of misconception about what happens in the naturalization interview. Um, a lot of, especially with the naturalization interview, when I first started, they thought, people thought they would go in and ask, answer all 100 questions. They didn't realize that they have to do the N-400. Now I'm seeing the pendulum sweep to the other side where they almost treat the N-400 as this um, oral vocabulary quiz. So they're basically really 
trying to basically force feed themselves all the different meanings of the uh, part 12 um, information. So it basically presents a very balanced uh, view of what actually happens in the naturalization interview and what to expect about the N-400. Um, they talk about the civics test, and again, they talk about the reading and writing test. So um, before we continue, I'm going to be talking about links, but, do, but does anybody have any questions or comments? Okay. So there I'm is, oh, sorry, Jennifer, there is yes, there. Are please go ahead. Chat. We have a couple. Go, go ahead, ahead and unmute. What is the N-400? I've heard the, it. Sorry. Um, the N-400 is the USCIS form. It's the application for naturalization. Oh, right. I get it. Yep. Okay. I, you know what? I say it so fast that they think my students think it's a word. Okay. It's <laughs> the N for naturalization and 400 is the number of the form. Okay. <laughs> Anything? And then, yeah, yeah. There's one more in the chat. Um, someone responds with, "I have no microphone," and they can go ahead and unmute if you would need further further information on that. About what? About I had the the response is, "I have no more uh, microphone." In the chat, I have no microphone. Oh, okay. I I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. She asked the question, is mm -hmm. this a YouTube channel right above her message? Oh, so let me let me uh, step back. USCIS has its own YouTube channel. Is that the is that OK? Um, if we have time later on, I'd be happy to show you the YouTube channel. Okay, so we're going to go on to links. And links is a forum for, uh, hosted by the Department of Ed Education, uh, the OCTE uh, Department. So they are basically oversee the occupation um, and career development and also for adult learners um, and adult education. So we've just created, they've just created two new forums. One is DEI, which is Diversity, um, Equity, and Inclusion Forum. So it's a discussion group. Of course, they have discussion groups for uh, ed tech. They have discussion groups about uh, math and numeracy. They have things about programming. But um, the one that I'm going to particularly concentrate on is the Civics and Education Citizenship Forum. So I am the moderator of that. And on there, we uh, talk about um, the, um, so things about immigrant education, uh, sorry, immigrant uh, integration. We're talking about civics, how we can incorporate that into our GED, high set and ESL classes. And of course, we talk about citizenship. Um, so it's been, it's a, they take a very broad view of um, of civics and the different literacies that uh, that support civics. So some of the recent uh, discussions and bulletins, um, a lot of people are concerned about the end of uh, Title 42, and we're trying to think about how it will affect uh, adult education. And I think I have another grammar error there. Sorry about that. Um, so so we I put up a series of resources about. Uh, where we can get start getting some guidance about how to respond to an influx of potential influx of our students. Um, and um, so um, this is a really interesting question, um, guiding policies of civics education and citizenship prep, prep classes. So we have really clear um, uh, objectives, language uh, objectives for speaking and listening and hearing. We have career, um, we have career objectives, but there's not really clear civics, um, uh, civics and citizenship objectives. It's more like it's assumed. So we could say, well, in California, we have that because we have the CASAS co co-ops, but 
it's not it's it's not explicitly stated in other states so we're having to we're basically starting to ask this question hey where do we go for agreement and guidance and uh to build up some some better um objectives for um for uh civics and uh, citizenship prep you know we think oh well we know what to teach with citizenship prep because we know we have to hit the n400 we know we have to do the civics questions. We know we have the reading and spelling. And we have that really great guide from USCIS about uh, the adult education programs, um, how to design an adult education program. But again, we don't have any broad base of, uh, basis of that. And this is particularly important because there's been a lot of discussion about civics education in K-12. We there and there's there's some real challenges going on in there. So we would like to bring, uh, start thinking about that, and so we can have something really strong to basically present not only to not only for our own programs, our own teachers and students, but also for the the people who create governmental policy and vote on funding for us. Um, again, uh, this is a really interesting one: the American History and Civics Grant. There's two grants that are coming out, and they're going to be coming out in late May or early June. One of them is for USCIS, basically to start funding um, innovation in citizenship programs. And they have a lot of deliverables, particularly about matching up with uh, legal representation. But if you're talking to a really small adult school like us, we can't make the, those deliver, the deliverables. USCIS says, hey, we do not want to discount you guys at the start. We're willing to work with you and adjust our deliverables so you can participate in these grant programs. The other one is um, the other one is coming out of for the American History and Civics grant. I'm seeing that more. Of course, they were there's they do not explicitly say that that they are k-12 it's broad enough that you can bring in your your um uh, occupational um your occupational uh civics pro your sorry your your uh workforce integration programs so i think if people start taking a look at these grant opportunities and getting involved with that i think this is a real way that we could build up our programs um, I'm always posting new uh, new events about citizenship and um, civics and immigrant integration. I always try to put up resources about whatever month with that, uh, whatever is, uh, um, heritage month it is. And so, and I'm always continually putting up information about the naturalization interv uh, interview and test redesign. So if people have questions, please participate on that. Yes, we have, we do have a person out there who would like to know where they find the information about the grants themselves. Okay, so if you go, if you're going to links.ed.gov, so for instance, this is our this is the form right here. I have a bulletin here about the the grant. So let's see. Here it is. So when you click this link. I have information, contact information, and there's a seminar that's coming up about how to participate in this grant. So I do really try to put up as much information as I can about the grant. So where you can get further information, if there's any seminars involved with that. So please take a look at that. And again, let me see if I can put this into the, let me put this into the chat. So this is the chat here. This is the links. Uh, this is the the links group where you would be finding this information. And of course, now it's not working. One second. Okay, this is the links group where you could find further information. Okay, and let me go back. Uh, let me go back to that. So now do you see a, um, are you seeing my original um, uh, slide about civics and citizen citizenship about links? Yes, yes. you're right yes. back to it. Good job. Great. 
Okay, so now I, one of the things that we just came out with is a professional development guide because Lynx is really a massive website. So we are basically saying, hey, we have different parts of Lynx that would speak to your different needs. So the first one is the citizenship and education group where we can start discussing um, more of our, uh, our needs and some of our concerns as citizenship and civics teachers. We have Lynx courses now. We don't have a Lynx court just yet about how to become a citizenship teacher or how to become a civics teacher. We, there used to be one that was hosted by USCIS. I understand that RTI.org, which is a research group, is looking in and trying to develop a, uh, a, a course for how, to, uh, for how teachers should be uh, teach citizenship or write lesson plans to incorporate civics content into their citizenship or into their ESL program and also to their GED and HiSET program. So keep your eye peeled. I think we're gonna get, eventually get something there. Also, we have something, uh, something called the Lynx uh, Learner Center and we have a whole collection of resources from USCIS and a couple other places that talk about how to become a US citizen. And of course, we have more resources related to civics ed education. And state resources. So when we talk about state resources, these are the federal initiatives that are basically guiding some of our, uh, some of our funding and also um, inspire our, our basically um, uh, create or create the standards and objectives for our programs. So we have uh, building opportunities through integrated English literacy and civics education, enhancing access for refugees and new Americans. So that's the EARN program and that's just really getting off the ground or, or not really getting, not getting off the ground. It's really gaining a lot more momentum. We're talking about IELCE and then also teaching skills that matter. So we have materials related to citizenship and civics in that area, in those the area. Question? Yes. It, I saw the, there's a citizenship teacher training, a full day one, request it. What would I do? Click on that link and- Yeah, click on that it? link. And the other thing, yeah, click on that link. The other thing is, is if, are you familiar with USCIS uh, educational opportunities? No. Okay. Um, let me see if I can share that real quick, super quick. And there we go. So USCIS, uh, no, that's USA Learns. Anybody using USCIS learns to deliver content? That's uh, citizenship content. Okay, so if we go under citizenship, and what you're day, taking a look for is resources for educational programs. So if we take a look at, so we're at USCIS.gov, we've gone to citizenship. And now we've gone to resources for educational programs. Under that, we have upcoming teacher pro training programs. And these are one day opportunities and they have them in all sorts of places. I've gone to a lot in Fresno and in San Francisco and they basically show people or new, uh, teachers how to teach citizenship. And you walk away with a lot of uh, good, great resources to take that. So I don't see anything coming up in California just now, but of course you can basically sign up and they can send you that, that information. Also, they take a look at the past training events. So let's take a look at that one. Yeah, there's that sign up. And here's some of those seminars. And, oh, they're closed. Okay. I could just do a whole hour on USCIS, but I'm gonna step back for a second and I'm gonna go, go to USA Learns. So USA Learns has a citizenship program. I'm gonna, um, I think I'll sign in as one of my students. Or is, is, are you familiar with, is this appropriate or not appropriate that I do this? I, well, so so there's um, so a lot of interest online. Okay. Wondering okay. if any of these classes are on the East Coast that you're mentioning. So 
Uh, lots of USCIS trainings happen on the East Coast, okay? So please go to that, that uh, training that I just showed you. This one is, and, a, yes, go ahead. And then um, the, someone lives in a remote area from any cities. Are there any online? If there, okay, I don't know of any online, but maybe we could put something together for as from OTAN. Absolutely. That yeah. sounds great. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm perfectly happy to do that. Um, and then we could even invite USCIS people. So this is USA Learns, and uh, this is uh, sponsored by the Sacramento Office of Education. Yay, SCOE. Um, and uh, so we have a citizenship program uh, here. So I'm going to go. So in the menu, menu. It's divided up the whole uh, process of the study for citizenship into four parts. They have steps to becoming a citizen and 400 practice civics and your citizenship and interview. This one, number one, is really oriented on the whole legal aspect of uh, starting for citizenship. It's incredibly boring. And I don't wanna say boring, dry. It's really, really dry. A lot of our students get bogged down in that and they never return to the class. My advice, if you're doing a citizenship program with your students, is to use this almost as a warm up activity for your students. So you're projecting it on the screen to your students, you talk about it a little bit, then you come back to it the next day, the next day, the next day. To get your students by then, you're able then to go on to the N400 practice, uh, um, N400, and you're able, this is divided into 10 different sections. A lot of people like this one about illegal activities. It's, my students say it's the most interesting. And they have listening activities, vocabulary activities, all sorts of things to, um, and I'm sorry, it's uh, not click, clicking right now all sorts of activities to engage the student on online learning. So when I do my distance learning class, I'm basically, um, when I do my distance learning class, I am basically um, telling my students to get their content, their civics content from USA Learns, and then I meet with them uh, every uh, for a half an hour every week, and I do a, a quiz based on the things that they've learned. So I am able to keep track of my hours in USA Learns and continue from there. Um, there's a there's a yes, comment yes. in the chat that someone yes. feels that the Burlington that USA Learns is better curriculum than Burlington. Uh, I would have to agree with you on that. No, no fault of Burlington. Burlington is great. But I think USCA, uh, USA Learns digs a little bit deeper into the part 12 stuff. Um, Voxy also, uh, or sorry, not Voxy, Engine, uh, that's basically spotter, sponsored by Proliteracy also had a very interesting program, but I think it was a little bit too high level for our, our uh, ESL students. And I know that they're redesigning it. So they're trying to do something uh, more appropriate. Another one that I would really like to recommend is USA, USA hello.org. So this, they also have self-paced citizenship courses in the student's native language. So if you have a student who's really kind of unsure and they wanna go through that USA hello program first and then maybe go through the, um, USA Learns thing, they're gonna be really solid when they go into their test. But remember, if you do too much computer-based computer stuff, I love computers, but it's you're gonna go into that interview with a live person and the person has to practice with a live person before they go for the interview. Um, anyway. Uh, let's go on to, uh, I have a lot of uh, questions about, always about um, part 12 information. So here's our, here's some resources here about uh, part, uh, part 12 information that you can access. Um, so the definitions and things like that. Um, some people, 
I, I prefer my, when I give definitions, I prefer a little bit more context with it. I don't like one word answers because I think it's, it, they, the people, I find that my students would be memorizing the one word answers, but they didn't understand really what they were saying. Uh, so I really think that if you, you are teaching citizenship and teaching civics, you have, a, this is a really good way to basically activate all the passive English learning, uh, English information that they've been acquiring in their classes and really able to use it and apply it. So um, anyway, the more English, the better, I, I think. So anyway, here's some, uh, some of these. Um, I have my own uh, things that I've taken, uh, I put together. And these are basically um, uh, mini citizenship interviews that are focusing on certain parts of the N-400. So um, I used to like to print these things out so the students could practice the N-400 information on one side and then the other side, there would be civics. So uh, take a look at all this information. Uh, next one. Also, there's some really good video playlists. We have a teacher down from Southern California who's going doing some really, really interesting stuff. Um, also, I was talking about USA Hello. Um, they were doing some of the 100 questions, um, civics, and I don't know why I put that in there, but again, there's some uh, USA civics, uh, or the civics information. Also, I put together last year, I, I presented this at, um, um, uh, where was it? CASA Summer Institute. Uh, I did an in-depth link between earlier parts of the N-400, parts one through 10, and with the civics questions. So I was pairing up residents because where you vote or where you live is where you vote. So trying to put those together with, uh, with civics questions, I thought that was really appropriate. My students seem to really appreciate it. And also, so for here's an example of uh, one of the sections from here. Again, I'm asking questions, and then I'm also um, asking, you know, have you have you ever voted? Did you vote in your home country? Uh, why can't you vote in the United States? This is one of the questions that the N4, or that the USCIS officers frequently ask. And again, what is the relationship between residents and voting? Um, I have a Padlet that I've been uh, updating, and um, this. Uh, has more information about voting and online courses, things that people can, uh, teachers can use in their classrooms. And I try to put my presentations up there. So I need to update date that a little bit. So again, that's at uh, bit.ly uh, slash USCIT dash Padlet. So please take a look at those resources in there. And I'm particularly looking, I'm, um, uh, trying to update the Celebrate America um, because I feel like if we use our holidays and our memorials, again, this is a really good way to um, convey American culture and enable the students to see their self and their place in American culture and also to practice their English. And um, I have basically expanded this by trying to create an adult education uh, calendar. So this is a simple Google calendar. So as you can see, I have like Black History Month and Women's History Month. AEC, by the way, means adult education uh, calendar. And I have something for um, uh, C uh, the California Adult Education Week. So that was the one of the big things. And Cesar Chavez. But here, here, I basically, if you click this, uh, click the, the event, I have more resources and more links for people to basically go in and see, uh, see different information about how people celebrate Adult Education Week. So it was really interesting to take a look at some of the schools, how they basically read their uh, proclamations before their school boards or uh, different activities that they were um, 
like when they went to um, Sacramento and talked to their legislators or visited their legislators in their um, own home uh, uh, cities. So taking a look at these, so I've been trying to create these um, these Google these really simple guides, um, putting uh, putting them in uh, to this Google Calendar. So and I really would like to get some feedback on this. So I'm asking people if they could basically add this calendar to to your own Google Calendar and give me some feedback. So how you do that, you go to your Google Calendar, you uh, click the plus sign, you subscribe to the calendar and the, what calendar you're trying to subscribe to is adult ed civics at gmail.com. And you have optional settings like how you want it to appear and then click back to your calendar and you have all this information. So I'm going to be adding a lot more stuff during the summer and um, I'm also going to build it out for a couple of years so we can know what's going to be coming up. I'm going to also include uh, conferences and of course OTAN talks so you can see uh, and uh, things related to uh, civics. Um, especially like for instance one of the big um uh laws for uh, civics but in for workforce is hipaa so hipaa has a day that it was passed i would put things into the calendar celebrating today it's national hipaa day here are some resources this is how our adult education programs are using hipaa in their ielc classes so this i, I is just yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to let you know we have about seven minutes. Oh, yeah. And I've also uh, gone ahead and put your article for OTAN's May Digest. Okay. Where it had the information about adding the Google Calendar and some of the overview. It's all written down in our free to access OTAN Digest, which is in the chat. Any well, other questions? Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So this is so. Our wildflower in San Jose is the mustard green, so which was originally, I believe, brought by the Italians. And we actually eat this. We call it galuzzi. Um, so a little olive oil and it actually tastes kind of peppery and green. So, um, but this, these next three slides were almost at the end. These are basically um, a hodgepodge of different resources. Um, USA Learns, uh, I uh, sorry, USA Hello uh, talked about a community support of a supplying uh, citizenship, uh, teachers and students. So again, take a look at those resources. It was a really good presentation. Uh, another really good presentation at COAPE was uh, developing a digital literacy skill roadmap presented by De Neil uh, Eckers Nell Eckersley. And she's basically working with a adult school a skills network. It seems to be spearheaded by um, a, a university in Minnesota. So they're trying to basically incorporate adult education pedagogy, adult literacy, and uh, a program concern. So for instance, civics. So there has there is a, a sample of their curriculum and basically how to implement it in their different courses. So this is a really good slide. Start clicking those links and uh, you'll get lost because it's there's so much. Another really, um, this is um, again, uh, concern about Title 42 and how it's gonna affect our adult education program. These are initial resources. I'm basically gonna try to try to see more about how we're going to be basically looking for how we can respond to this as an adult educators. And this is just a miscellaneous bunch of uh, stuff that I put together. The one thing that I talk about in the article that I did not talk about in this presentation, we talked about, um, sorry, the Constitution explained. So it's basically 35 videos. Uh, from iCivics and Center for Civic and Education, they work together, they put together some really great videos, and uh, they put together some lesson plans for that. So again, take a look at these resources. Um, this one was really interesting from the American Bar Association about 
habit, uh, habit building changes for DEI. So that was really interesting to basically examine and to respond to those challenges. Clinic put together uh, some really good resources up here, especially this one, Neighbors Not Strangers. It's a new storytelling project. And that basically put together with Weave Tales, which is basically TED Talks by immigrants. And they're talking about their experience. It's really, really interesting. Our students really, really enjoy watching it. And so please, please take a look at any of these resources. And I'm basically done. Thank you very much. And I uh, just love OTAN.